Hey everybody, Kelly Engineering here, and welcome to episode 24 of Project Ozone 3. Episode 23 just came out, and uh, three people apparently supported the idea of having the uh, no bordered nether brick, fiery nether brick framed drawers. And I gotta say, I absolutely agree with that decision. Now that I've actually seen what the essences look like inside them, oh, that looks fantastic. Looks absolutely phenomenal. I've connected it to the ME system through the use of uh, these ME cables, and then I have the cable facades over them. Oh, by the way, this is the network tool. If you didn't realize, uh, when you create it, um, you can store a bunch of cards in it. It's it's a very it's a very useful tool, and mainly I just use it to see where all of my uh, cable facades are. It's kind of like the uh, Yeda wrench when it comes to uh, conduit facades, only more functional. But yeah, I have the essence here, and whoop, all of it is in the ME system. Looks wonderful. Uh, I'm not collecting... Oh, I still need to make the other plant gatherers for the other side of the platform. Duh. In any case, this is what it looks like now, and I'm very happy with it. I... And waiting for more emeralds to come in. Wow, that filled up quickly. I used all of it right before I hit the uh, record button. But I'm waiting for more emerald essence to come in so that I can make more storage upgrades and make the storage upgrades, uh, emerald storage upgrades for all of these drawers. Sorry if it appears a little laggy while I'm recording uh, in here, but I have a lot of <laughs> I have a lot of block updates happening at once. In any case, I finished uh, copper, tin, lead, silver, nickel. Uh, platinum, I believe this is osmium, iridium, iridium and osmium, as well as the cow, sheep, pig, and chicken seeds. I still don't have enough rabbit stuff to create the rabbit seeds, but that's what's going to go in that slot, and I have no idea what I'm going to put in here. Probably silicon, sulfur, certus, fluix, and uh, I don't think rubber seeds are in this pack. Regardless, uh, probably some ancillary Resources will go there. Oh, Yalorium is definitely going to go there. But that is how uh, this goes right now. I moved this platform. Well, I guess I didn't really move it, but I deleted the nether bricks and filled in the pillar here just to make it more uniform. And probably over the weekend, I'm going to make another platform and put the Ender IO and... Uh, the thermal alloys, all that stuff on this other platform over here. I also started work on uh, my auto uh, my auto wither killer over here. And I made a brand new reactor in here and some vibrant capacitor banks. And that is going to be transferring stuff to these plant gatherers. And these are brand new seeds for nether, stone, wither skeleton, skeleton, and yellorium. Uh, the plant gatherers are going to collect everything, put it in this ender chest, and then the ender chest is going to go to a, uh, a crafter, tier 3, so that it can make um, blank, what is it, blank skulls? Yeah, blank skulls, and then soul dust. And with these blank skulls, I can make wither skeleton skulls. This was a new recipe for me. I uh, have never seen the blank skull before, so... I th it used to just be nine wither skeleton essence, got you the skull, but they made it more difficult, which is perfectly fine. I just need to uh, plan around for that. So, yeah, I'm going to uh, craft up all that stuff and then push it into these two storage drawers so that I can feed my uh, wither builders. I have a timer here set to uh, 20 ticks, so every, every second it'll activate the uh, work energy buffer. Otherwise, you will have withers spawning. I think at one point I had 12 withers in this uh, killing chamber at once. And it was destroying all of the drops. It didn't make sense. So yeah, put a timer set on like one second to activate the buffer. And that is more than enough time for a wither to spawn in, get killed, and then another wither will uh, spawn in to take its place. But at this point I have more than a stack of nether stars, more than a stack of shards... And I'm getting the Supreme Essence and Withering Souls, and then I'm trashing everything else. So what I'm doing right now is I'm getting some of this Aquamarine because it's required for Astro Sorcery, and 14 is not going to be enough. And it's literally all I have. Shoot. So I'm going to need to uh, 
find a way to get more aquamarine. Uh, I'll look up what dimension you get the shale from. And in any case, let's start by making the astral tome. So I can't remember whether or not I spawned in with one, but regardless, I had a creeper explosion early on, <laughs> early on in my playthrough. Boom, there we go. So I may have lost it if I did spawn in with it, but I have the astral tome. And with that, we can get into, oh, wow. Oh, got it, because of my uh, loot bags. But with that, we can get into Astral Sorcery. So let's zoom in on Discovery. Boom. I'm in Landia right now, going through a whole bunch of shrines. I've already gone through this one. I just wanted to go over the different types. So you have this big one. And uh, this big one has uh, two chests, usually in the corners. Oh, well, usually has two chests in the corners. A uh, floating crystal in the center, uh, which you put a crafting table right here to start things out. And uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. It's pretty big. But you also have these small ones right here. And uh, these small ones usually have a... Oh, I haven't checked this one out yet, but... Usually have a chest in the... I have checked this one out. Usually have a chest in one of the corners of the pillars. So you can get a whole bunch of... And you see I've visited quite a few of the shrines already. Uh... But there are various resources related to astral sorcery inside these chests. Like, I'm going to need an ender pearl and some of this marble in order to make uh, the first wand for this mod. But yeah, those are the two main types. There is a third type, and that's actually on the slime island in the main world, where it's a little, it's an in-between size, and it's really cramped in there. You can find a rock crystal. You'll never find a rock crystal in these ones. And uh, actually, yeah, we'll just clear this out. But yeah, see, after it ends at the fountain area, there's nothing underneath it. But yeah, there's always a rock crystal in this one, and then the one in between, the small and largest. But I am going to try to find another way to get large amounts of aquamarine, and I'll be back with you if uh, my hypothesis is correct. So welcome to the Lost Cities dimension. And uh, I've been doing a little bit of searching, just to make sure, because there are beaches everywhere here. I've been doing a little bit of searching trying to find some aquamarine like around the beaches and I'm not really finding anything. I've been searching for, well that's not a very good display of it, but I've been searching for quite a while all over the place trying to find some sort of aquamarine. And hey, wait a minute, that's cool. Huh. Why am I constantly regaining air? Is it the saturation token? Hmm, interesting. Regardless, I haven't found any aquamarine while I've been searching in the Lost Cities. I have, however, been finding fluid cows like nobody's business. But it's all stuff I have. I uh, haven't really perused through the configs for the fluid cows in this pack. But I think, yeah, it's, it's always the same cows. They probably, oh my stars. Uh, yeah, I'll take you. But with flu cows, I think that they've disabled the uh, a lot of the more useful ones, like iron and stuff like that, forcing you to use the seeds instead. So, yeah, that's a possibility. Mushroom stew, I don't think I have, though. Neither, I don't have antimatter, either. But I'll take a look at the config, see whether or not I have all the cows that I could possibly ever get. And my search for an easy way to get aquamarine continues. So this is the portal to get to the Lost Cities. It's just a bed on top of two diamond blocks and then surrounded with skulls. Uh, actually, thank you to a member of the Discord, uh, Sergeant Lego Town, for bringing this to my attention. I knew Lost Cities was in Project Ozone because it's one of the uh, world defaults, but I wasn't aware that there was actually a portal to get there. So this is very handy because there is terracotta all over the place, and I'll definitely be putting a builder there. Uh, not to mention this red nether brick. And yeah, that's an easy way to get red nether brick. But yeah, thanks, Sergeant, for uh, giving me that information, and that is an excellent portal to be using. So I've made this industrial foregoing laser drill and laser base, and I have four of them going uh, into the laser base with a bunch of red laser lenses. The reason why I'm using red laser lenses is I want to increase the chances of getting uh, redstone and, most importantly, destabilized redstone for a uh, project I'm going to do a little bit later. 
but I'm also getting aquamarine shale out of it. So um, even though I have the red lenses in here and I should be getting more redstone, destabilized redstone and ruby than anything else, it still doesn't mean that I am, quite frankly, it confuses me a little bit because I thought that putting in the lenses would limit my drops, but I'm getting a good array of pretty much everything, including this shale. So I'm going to uh, keep that going for my destabilized redstone project later on, but I'm glad that I have a decent amount of aquamarine now. So I'm on my slime island right now at the uh, medium size astral sorcery thing with a crafting table and a crafting station. So I'm going to put down the crafting station first. Yeah, okay. Now I'm going to put down the crafting table. Really, there it goes. So I got a little bit of, uh, see that shining light that's shooting down at the crafting table? That means that I can use the crafting table to create my resonating wand or whatever the heck it's called. Yeah, resonating wand. So we need two aquamarine, an ender pearl, and two marble of any type. And there we go, got a resonating wand. So I'm back in Landia waiting for night to fall so I can actually use my resonating wand, but I just wanted to go over this constellations tab. So whenever you find a constellations paper, and if you've been pl playing the pack for a while, you've undoubtedly gotten them in uh, loot bags. But once you get them, it will immediately populate the constellation tab with what you found. Now before you actually get into Astral Sorcery, you'll only unlock five. So any other constellation papers that you find will always say there is nothing here, and they'll never update with anything. So you put them back, they're essentially useless to you, and the constellations we'll get into a little bit later. But I just wanted to go over that tab. Alright, it is officially nighttime, and I have taken off my night vision... Uh, my night vision totem and I'm wandering around looking for uh, some glowing areas once I have these glowing areas I'll know that right below that is something called rock crystal and rock crystal is gonna be the next thing we need to progress in the mod so I'm just gonna continue searching trying to find some and I'll be back with you once I actually find a glowing area found one alright so this glowing area right here means that almost directly below this area I'm gonna find a rock crystal so I think it's uh, Y level 4. So I'm going to dig down to about Y level 4 and put my uh, I'm going to put my night totem back on. All right, I'm sorry. I know it's dark, but I am at Y level 4 and holding the resonating wand in my hand and you'll see I got these uh little flashy bits going on. So, let's put night vision back on. Yes, it's uh, oh, I can still see them pretty well. So, I'm going to dig in this direction. And, oh, awesome. Found the rock crystal. <laughs> Let's see if there's any more in the area. There are not. But I got my rock crystals, and these do not stack because each one has a different attribute related to it. But now that I have these rock crystals, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to grab more, uh, search around a little bit more, and then I'll be back in the overworld momentarily. Oh, yeah, and now that I have depleted the rock crystals from the area, I no longer have any glowy any glowiness going on in the area so you know that you've depleted all of the rock crystals. So I mined the other one so quickly I didn't really get a chance to uh, show you what it looks like but this is the rock crystal ore. And yeah that's just what it looks like. Got some more and actually there is some more over here quite a ways away so I'm gonna mine over that way and get that rock crystal ore. Alright so I made some sooty marble which I only need one piece of. Some regular astral marble and a crafting table. Boom! So they make the luminous crafting table and uh, you have to make this in one of the crafting tables by the collection crystal. But I have this table and now I'm going to go up here. Oh, I cleared out the slime island because they were just were spawning in like mad. So I have this and wow, I am in a fantastic area. Um, so depending on where you place the luminous crafting table and it's usually like if I recall correctly, and of course, correct me if I'm wrong, the uh, I think it's double C level, then uh, you have an increased chance of like gaining an awesome amount of starlight. Now, I got really lucky here. It very well could have been I placed down this table and the starlight collection never like progressed past here. So despite the fact that this is so far away from my base, I, uh, I may actually set up all of the astral sorcery stuff here. 
Um, because I'm very happy with that Starlight collection. Now that I've crafted my Luminous Crafting Table, if you zoom out... So, I had Discovery, but now I have a new one called Exploration. And Exploration, gonna zoom in, zoom in, zoom in. We got a whole bunch of new stuff that we can do. Alright, I'm glad I managed to catch this. So, uh, the sun is rising right now, you can see that in the background. And as the sun rises, the amount of starlight available is diminishing. So, uh, that's a little bad for my crafting aspirations, but it's what happens. So I may have to wait for nighttime in order to craft the light well. I uh, honestly can't remember, but we'll try it out anyway. There we go, now that I have the right recipe. Three ruined marble, two chiseled, the rock crystal, two aquamarine, and I will get the light well. There we go, I just right clicked. Here's some uh, little buzzing and a glowing. And I just got the light well. Cool. Alright, so it's turning nighttime again. You can see that the uh, collected starlight in my luminous crafting table is getting uh, is getting higher. So I'm going to take this rock crystal once away. Well, once again, it's a throwaway with low purity. I'm going to throw it into my light well. So you see it freaking out right now. And it's actually filling up my portable tank with some liquid starlight. So the light well can hold on its own, uh, I believe, two buckets. Two buckets of uh, liquid starlight. And you can attach a fluid conduit to the bottom. And it will just, it'll transfer out just fine. Eventually, this uh, crystal will break. And I'll have to uh, put in another one. But I'm going to uh, leave this alone for a little bit until I have a bucket. And once I have a bucket, I'm going to create the next item. Cool, I got one bucket. So now I have my liquid bu uh, starlight bucket. And this is still going. Um, I didn't have to throw in the crystal during the nighttime. However, it is uh, it will produce more starlight during the night, or the more opportunity it has to absorb starlight to create the liquid. Um, so yeah, that's why I waited for night, but I didn't have to. So I'm going to put this liquid starlight in here, and I'm going to get this focal resonator. There we go, correction, phosic resonator. So what the phosic resonator is going to do for me is uh, I should probably turn my... Uh, I should probably turn night vision off again. But as I'm searching around, there will be uh, light blue or dark blue patches on the ground. And depending on that patch, more starlight will be produced. It's a good place to set up a base. So I'm going to uh, head back, I'm going to head back into Landia or, yeah, I'll go back into Landia to see if I can't find a good place to set up my base. Oh yeah, look at that. I barely had to enter uh, Landia at all. But see this is uh, this dark blue right here? This means that it is a good place to set up astral sorcery, uh, an astral sorcery base. Oh yeah. So there is a light blue variant, and if I find one, I'll insert a screenshot. But I am definitely going to set up my base here. I take it back. I found an even better place. See how it's covering most of the ground and like the amount of white... So, uh, starlight sparkles is absolutely insane so this is going to be my uh, my astral sorcery base and here's what I was talking about earlier with the weak area it's uh, not light blue like I remember but it's definitely like sparse and you don't see those white sparkles at all so yeah this is an area where you could set up your base but it's not ideal I've made this little platform right here and hang on before it turns and it's high up in the sky and it's starting to turn day, so it, this isn't as thick as it usually is. But uh, yeah, up here in the sky, I still have my uh, intense concentration of starlight. And I'm safe from the stupid Landia pink blazes that keep spawning up. But yeah, I'm going to uh, have this be my astral sorcery setup. The next thing I was going to make was this. It's called a spectral relay. So a spectral relay... Uh, when you build them, it pretty much ignores these intense fields of starlight that I've been looking for. And uh, I can generate starlight in pretty much any location using that spectral relay. Uh, they have to be 16 blocks away from each other. And uh, the, setup is kind of, the setup is kind of weird. So yeah, you craft them like this and then you need to make these little multi-block structures and set them... Um, 
no more than 14 blocks away from your crafting tables and then you can set up multiple ones and they have to be like 16 blocks away from each other in order to get the best bonus. I'm going to set that up in the overworld a little bit later. I'm going to stay in Landia for Astral Sorcery for now. Just because it's going to be easier for my uh, Starlight in order to get it. But the next thing I am going to craft is this, the Looking Glass. So the Looking Glass is going to require these glass lenses right here. And then sticks, a gold ingot, and planks. So yeah, that's no issue. I'm going to make that and uh, be back with you once it is nighttime. Here we go. This is a good teachable moment. So uh, this is the telescope um, crafting recipe. And this is how much starlight I have in the table right now. And this is going to be how much is required to actually craft the telescope. So I'm going to have to wait till it's a little bit more nighttime anyway. And the starlight fills up on the table more before I can actually right click it and generate it. And there we go, I have enough. And you'll see that now that I have enough starlight, it recognizes that and shows the recipe. So right click with the resonating wand. Awesome. So let's look at the night sky. So you'll see as I'm moving along, and it may not be dark enough yet, Oh, hang on. So when you use the telescope, or I'm sorry, the looking glass, if you uh, look around the night sky, so you see that I am blocked from actually viewing something right here because the pillar is actually blocking my view of the sky. If I want to go over here, apparently something else is blocking my view. Oh, because I am underneath this marble arch, then that is technically a blocked view of the night sky, so I need to get up here. There we go. So what I'm looking for is, oh, um, very, very bright flashing lights. And, oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. Right here. So if you hold shift, then I have just paused my view. And even though I'm moving the mouse around, I'm not looking through the sky anymore. So I need to figure out which constellation this is and connect the dots to that constellation. So let me look at my notes over here. I was looking at it wrong. So this is VCO. So if I click and hold, there we go. I just connected that line there, connected this line here. Come on. There we go. I just discovered the constellation VCO. So now I'm going to spend the rest of this night trying to find other constellations. Oh, and now that I've found it, if I uh, look in the night sky, where is it? What should have happened is it should recognize that I found the constellation and highlight it. There it is. So, boom. I'm going to look for some other constellations and uh, see what I can find. Yeah, something's wrong with the uh, night sky here because this is certainly not where I found VCO if over here is any in uh, indication. But we'll work through those problems. I went back to the overworld just to see whether or not that uh, constellation not matching where I was looking issue is, the, uh, is just something in Landia, but I don't even have night sky rendering. I don't even have a moon or a sun in the overworld either and I don't know how to fix that maybe a relog well it's daytime now and all I found was a uh, VCO but if I click on the constellations in the constellation tab you see that it's actually now a teal color instead of the normal blue as if I had only found the paper and down here it will also show the phases of the moon that this constellation will sh uh, show up but yeah I will not see this constellation whenever the moon looks like this, whenever the moon is in this phase. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to make the uh, next uh, crafting altar for Astral Sorcery. That's the Starlight Crafting Altar. So the recipe isn't that difficult, but once I craft it, it's not going to work for me because this requires to be in a very specific structure, namely on the next page, this one. So it shows me what, uh, what I need in order to make this altar, but that's why I made this uh, 
this exact size. So I'm going to need nine across in order for this to still look good. And uh, so I'm going to build that structure and I'm going to build the starlight crafting table and be back with you once that is all done. Here we go. So it is now nighttime and I the next tier crafting table can only be crafted at nighttime. And look at that. See, as a uh, it's kind of messing with itself right now. It's also going to take a while because uh, it's taking quite a bit of starlight in order to do this. All right, so my uh, starlight crafting table is now the crafting altar or luminous, whatever it was called. <laughs> So I'm going to move this over here and I'm going to place this right on this block. Boom. So like I said, I need a specific structure in order to do that. So I have crafted the sextant. The sextant under normal circumstances is when you look at the night sky with it, sometimes you'll see uh, different colored stars like this one. So this star means that in this direction or supposedly this direction because the night sky is all sorts of messed up in this pack. Oh, hang on. I have a new constellation. Let's fill this in. There we go. I just got a Vetus. So, yeah, I'm happy with that. And let's see if there are any others in the sky before we continue on. Nope. Does not look like it. Cool. In any case, yeah, the sextant is supposed to be used to uh, find the locations of shrines. But it's kind of useless in this pack because we have flight and... We have journey maps, so we can just see where the uh, shrines are. But, yeah, I'm, ha I'm perfectly happy with that. The other sextant use is... Boom. So I just right-clicked the Starlight Crafting Altar, and it showed me a little holographic display of what the, uh, what the structure needs to look like in order to get this thing to work. So I'm going to uh, fill all of this in with what needs to be done, and I will be back with you shortly. After that's com woo! After that's complete. <laughs> Once again, I'm waiting for nighttime to fall, and I've uh, actually taken a bucket of liquid starlight and just thrown it into the ground in the puddle, and then thrown a rock crystal into it. So uh, I have to wait a, a while in order for this to work. But doing this will increase the size of the. So yeah, I have size, purity, and cutting. So throwing a rock crystal into the liquid starlight increases the size up to a maximum of 400. And wow, I actually already have a pretty good size rock crystal right here. Oh, wow. But yeah, it'll increase it up to uh, about 400. And I'm not sure how long this takes. So let's, uh, let's grab him. So it's 280 right now. I'm going to wait five minutes and see how much that uh, increases. So I didn't even have to wait five minutes. It completely absorbed that bucket of liquid starlight. And yeah, the size is now 327. Uh, I don't think there's a way to increase purity as of right now, but cutting can be increased with the use of a grindstone, and I'll make that now. now the grindstone is made simply enough. It's just a piece of marble, uh, any sort of plank, and two sticks. Hit that with the resonating. There we go, got that. And where'd it go? There she is. I'm gonna set it right down here. I don't think I went over these, did I? Oh, well this is lumination powder and it's just a piece of aquamarine and glowstone. You get 16 of them. And when you place them down, they just act as lights. And uh, they fit the theme. They're better than using torches, especially when I'm working with astral sorcery. So yeah, I got those setting around here. I'm gonna take this rock crystal that I have uh, that I had submerged in liquid starlight. I'm going to throw that on the grindstone and then right click it. So be careful because you can. Cutting is 26% now. You got to be careful because using the grindstone too much on rock crystals can break them. 34%. Nice. And you see that the size is now. Uh, less as well. So I'm at 193 size, but cutting 34%. I may need to submerge this again in some liquid starlight. Well, while I'm waiting for my uh, rock crystal to increase in size again, uh, the second I found a new constellation using my, uh, not telescope, but my looking glass, I unlocked attunement. 
I'm going to zoom in on attunement. And wow, this is a big section. And uh, we're going to get started with attunement next, starting with the crystal lenses. I take that back. The first thing that we're going to craft is the telescope. Planks and two gold. And boom, telescope. Hit that with a resonating wand. So what the telescope does is I can place it down right here. And you see it's pointed at the night sky. So I can just... I don't have to uh, hold, I don't have to uh, actually look around myself. I can just use these to look around the night sky until I find a constellation. All right, so it's daytime right now, and I'm going to take this opportunity to craft up a linking wand. And I'm going to need a rock crystal for that. Um, once again, you can use a low purity linking uh, correction rock crystal for this because it's just a wand. So let's see here. I need more starlight than I have right now, but this is the recipe for it. And once you craft it, you can begin iron transmutation. So these, where are you? This crystal lens right here, what the crystal lens does, and since I'm not gonna craft it, I didn't get into it, is uh, I could go to any of the collector crystals around the shrines, and uh, I could link that collector crystal to my starlight table through the use of those lens. Uh, when you're crafting the uh, when you're crafting the lenses, make sure that you have a good purity. Like I have an 80 something percent purity crystal over here. But make sure you're using a good purity whenever you're creating those lenses because if you're using a low purity, that could uh, that's a quote unquote clouded lens and not as much starlight can travel through it in order to get to its destination. Uh, I'm not worried about that at all, actually. So, uh, yeah, I'm not going to craft those, but the linking tool has other uses, mainly iron transmutation. All right, I've made my linking tool, and uh, I have three iron ore right now. I'm going to go into this shrine. Boom. And I'm going to place... There's a sheep in here. I'm going to place this iron ore. Use my linking tool to link. So I just linked the... Uh, floating crystal, this collector crystal, to this iron ore. And I believe this actually works better if there is a uh, direct line to, uh, to starlight. So I'm going to do that right now. All right, so I've cleared out a visible pathway to the, uh, to the night sky. And actually, you can see that now that it's nighttime, the particles coming from the collector crystal are different for the linking. So yeah, these particles definitely did not exist prior to this. So it's just a matter of uh, playing the waiting game so I can turn this iron ore into star metal ore. If I'm honest, I'm a little frustrated right now. <laughs> As I always get with magic mods. Um, this is the third night, the third in-game night, that I've had this floating crystal on this iron ore. And it is not transmuting. It should not be taking this long. Uh, <laughs> so... Yeah, I really don't know what to do. This is the, this is what's keeping me from progressing through the mod. I need this star metal. So, man. At the very least, I got my last constellation. Uh, the constellations on the paper. I can't find any more using the telescope until I attune myself with something. And uh, I can't attune myself with anything right now. I need star metal. But, yeah, this is the last... Uh, it's the last constellation I need out of the five base constellations. Boom, Dissidia. And yeah, in the Astral Tome, if you look at the constellations, each of the constellations has a uh, ritual that I can perform with that constellation. And uh, yeah, I already explained the already explained the phases of the moon to you, all that good stuff. I suppose in the meantime, I could show you what the uh, Astral Sorcery weapons and tools do. So uh, the rock crystals that I was sharpening earlier, I have at 94% to 97% and a decent size above 300. And I am going to make the sword. So, boom. So the crystal sword has, uh, it says durability <laughs> 10? Really? 
but you see that the uh, size of it doubled, or it took the uh, it was additive, and then the cutting was averaged. So, and the purity, well, yeah, the purity was also averaged. Regardless, the uh, size and cutting are uh, what really matter for this thing. So I'm gonna go kill some pigs. Wow, that is really powerful. But you see the cutting is now at 91%. The uh, more that you use this tool, and the durability hasn't changed either. The, the, this is an essentially a, uh, an unbreakable tool. It can only lose its effectiveness the more that you use it. And uh, yeah, in order to uh, increase its effectiveness, yeah, cutting 90%, size 645, in order to increase its effectiveness again, you have to bathe it in starlight, liquid starlight. Um, so yeah, it's a, no pun intended, it's literally a double-edged sword. So it's very powerful, it doesn't break, but the more you use it, and same with the pickaxes, and axes and shovels, the less effective it will become. So if you bathe it in uh, some starlight, and then same as the rock crystal, it absorbs all of that. And let's look at its stats. So its size is 745, it's awesome, but its cutting has gone down to 80%. So uh, lore-wise, whenever uh, something absorbs starlight, it does increase its size. However, it uh, loses it loses a uh, loses its edge. So after you bathe it in starlight, you do have to grind it up a little bit again. And I have it to 89%, and the size is down to 685. But yeah, you have to continuously do that in order to keep your celestial tools effective. Well, it seems my frustration is uh, seems my frustration is a little justified. So apparently in Landia, and I I noted earlier when I was looking through the telescope that where I was looking wasn't where the constellations actually were. That's because uh, the starlight network in Astral Sorcery is broken in Landia. I have to use the Overworld. So, yay, <laughs> I'm going to uh, transfer this to the uh, overworld and see if I have some better luck. There we go, I'm in the overworld and it's actually showing the particles that it's in the middle of transmutation. So, uh, once again, the quest book has failed me. So, it says that I could have done blood magic to get the ore and whatever, that's perfectly fine. But, a little blurb or something in the quest book saying can't do this in Landia, must do an overworld, would have been amazing. I had to go to the Project Ozone 3 Discord to figure this out. Um, so yeah, now once again I'm going to play the waiting game, get this to transmute to uh, Star Metal, and uh, yeah, I'll be back with you once that's done. Oh geez, that didn't take long. I hit the stop record button and it immediately went. <laughs> amazing. So, awesome, I got some Star Metal ore. And uh, so you notice that the beams of light are still pointed in the direction I had them before. And I'm going to link these two. So that means that I can place the iron ore in the same locations and it'll start to transmute again. I don't have to reset the connection every time. But I got four star metal ore, which means I have enough to uh, make seeds. I don't have to go through this bull crap again. I'm also kicking myself quite a bit because uh, I got star metal ore from my uh, little laser drill. As well as rock crystal ore, oddly enough. So I'm going to break that uh, a little bit later. But yeah, so I have nine star metal ore right now, thanks to my laser drill. All right, the way that it wants you to do this is uh, put the star metal ore inside the um, grindstone. But I'm not going to do that mainly because I have my Endist Furnace, I can quadruple everything. So I'm taking my 9 ore, throwing these in here, and I actually want to run a, uh, a little experiment. So here, I got my 36 star metal ore, which was quadrupled from my 9. I'm going to throw these in a sag mill. I cannot throw them in a sag mill. There must be something I can pulverize this with. Alright, going to my uh, pulverizer, I'm throwing these in the pulverizer. And gonna get my, uh, gonna get some stardust back. Alright, I've got 36 star metal dust. Oh, those sons of guns. Alright, so the stardust can't go in the endist furnace, unfortunately. 
But I'm not one to give up so easy, so I just made iron ingots. I want to make some pulverized iron dust. Because I know pulverized iron dust can go in a uh, in one of the furnaces. So I started this journey with uh, two stacks of iron ingots. Now I have one stack of pulverized iron. Oh, and it's doubling it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Excellent. So we know that it quadruples ore and then it doubles the uh, dust. So I essentially have infinite iron here. Um, <laughs> this is awesome. And also an exploit, which I shouldn't be showing. I should report this immediately, but for now I'm just going to laugh at how hilarious it is. <laughs> Uh, I thought I was hitting record when I threw it in there, but uh, I just threw a piece of glowstone and a rock crystal into this pond of liquid starlight, and uh, it's going through a little uh, metamorphosis right now, and soon it is going to become something called an ore cluster. An ore cluster, whatever cluster it is. Oh, I missed the transformation, but this is a gem crystal cluster. So it is, of course, not ready for harvest because it just started growing. But if you look at uh, F3, there's some metadata there, and I'll search it. But yes, yeah, it says Astral Sorcery, Block Gem Crystals, Stage, Stage 0. So there are a maximum of four stages related to this. But So this Gem Crystal Cluster does take a while to grow, and I could position more Starlight onto it in order to help it grow faster. But when this grows, it becomes... Uh, a rock crystal cluster for me. And it's very, very handy. All right, it is nighttime, and it is time to make the next altar. I already have all of the ingredients in here. Stardust, star metal ingot, aquamarine, and uh, chiseled marble. Chiseled marble. Uh, marble pillar. And... Oh, do I not have enough starlight yet? Oh, not even close. In order to complete this, you do need to max out the starlight uh, being stored in your altar. So, there we go. I guess it's near max. Regardless, hit it with the resonating wand, and look at the beauty. There we go. Alright, so, and you'll see down at the bottom I learned more about constellation. So, I now have constellation over here. But as with the uh, previous crafting table, you need a very specific structure in order for this to work. So I just hit it with the sextant so that it shows you uh, what you need to do in order to make it work. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to do that. I'm going to make that up. You know, I did it again. Uh, things that require starlight to grow or transmute can't work in Landia. So I made this and I'm about to break it. You see I get nothing out of it? It's because it was still only stage zero. I need to go to the overworld to grow up those clusters if I want them to work properly. So, I really need to, uh... If you look at the Astral Tome, there is a way to actually generate starlight inside, uh... on my own. So I have these collector crystals, and I can make collector crystals right now. After I make resonating gems. But I need the starlight infuser for that. But once I get to that point, I can move this entire layout into the overworld and continue my work there. Um, and make something a little bit more permanent than this, than this is. Unfortunately, I think I'm going to have to abruptly end the episode here. I just looked at uh, all of my recordings. I'm at 60. This is clip number 67 of this episode. Uh, I usually average about 27. So I have a lot of footage to go through, and uh, next episode will continue. Uh, I am actually going to go ahead in between episodes, or over the weekend, I'm going to go ahead and... Oh, I need Constellation. I'm going to go ahead and make the Collector Crystals, and move this entire setup into the overworld, because uh, Landia is causing me issues, and it's causing progress to be slow, and I don't want that. But with that, I am... Kelly Engineering. Hope you enjoyed the episode, and I will see you on Monday. Bye bye.